Welcome to Path to Nowhere. Let's play video again. This time I'm gonna be playing the event. I'm not sure if I can get through everything, but I'll try to go as far as I can. Hopefully I'll have enough time to complete it. But if not, then... Uh, sorry, you'll probably just only see this if that's the case. <laughs> There's only nine days left, so I gotta... I gotta speed run it as fast as possible. Kinda do wish the events would last a little longer, but can't be helped. Anyways, let's get started. Enter stage. In the heart of winter, marking the end of an old year and the beginning of a new one. The bureau spruced up the rest zones with quaint decorations and carefully des designated a few safe I can't even read. Safe spots for cozy campfires. Right beside these, they set up stands offering marshmallows and roasted chestnuts. Oh, that makes me hungry. You can't help but look forward to it. The fireworks this city will launch for the festival. Seriously? We can go out and play? Well, I heard it from Wen, and Wen said that she heard it from Adjutant Nightingale, so I guess it's true. It must be true then. You just happen to plan on roasting a few chestnuts for dessert. And what do you know, you're greeted with this exhilarating news right off the bat. Next to the crackling hearth, Luvia, Ray, and Ignis are busy roasting marshmallows on skewers. Their soft popping sounds filling the air. As the marshmallows turn a golden caramel color, a deliciously sweet scent wafts around and the flickering flames paint the girl's face in warm blushing tones. Why are you making it sound so delicious? Why am I the last to hear about this? Is this actually happening? You put on a mock serious face, clutching two chestnuts and taking a seat next to the stove, eager to join in. Come on, Chief. At least you know about it now. Well, don't you want to join in on the fun with the rest of us, Chief? Yeah, actually, I really want to. Then, then let's think about where to go. We need to find a place big enough for all of us. There's so many of us. We could even shoot a movie. <laughs> That's true. Shooting a movie? I've dabbled in that. Maybe not this time. But it's our valuable vacation time. We shouldn't be working through it. That's true. You three heads cocked to the side are simultaneously popping marshmallows and chestnuts into your mouth. Luvia Ray suddenly claps her hands, lighting up with a great idea. Oh, I remember hearing about a mythical theater in Eastside when I auditioned. It's opening soon. Theater? Those old school baffling shows aren't really my thing. Hey, it's not just any theater. It opens only during this mystical hour. Also... Luvia Ray, with a secretive glint in her eye, inches closer to you and Ignis, her finger raised as if to reveal a secret. Also... I've heard the theater's owner is quite a legend herself. She's the genius operating this mysterious and glamorous venue, turning numerous actors into household names. She has a talent for enabling these stars to shine and express their true selves on stage. She's like the entertainment industry's top talent finder. Hence her casual approach, opening the doors only once annually. Only once a year? You know, this format kind of rings a bell. I've heard that in this theater, every nook is part of the show. Imagine you could be walking and suddenly find yourself in the middle of a scene. Hmm, that's unexpectedly interesting. That is. Looks like Ignis is getting a bit hooked on by what Luvia is saying. Right? Imagine if I could get some advice from the Star Maker. Maybe my skills would skyrocket. Then I'd make sure Chief gets to see my first show. Hey, don't forget about me. <laughs> of course, I'll include you too. Seems like they're friends. Luvia Ray gets up, slides over to your other side, and together with Ignis, they playfully trap you in the middle. Just think, I might turn into the cutest little girl if I get to visit this theater. Chief, Luvia's really keen on it. Let's just check it out. I mean, I, I guess it doesn't hurt. Definitely a good idea. I'm curious, what kind of musical could they be staging? And it's once a year, might as well. Bathed in neon lights, the quaint three-story building echoes with strains of graceful music from behind its partially open doors. So this is it, the Fable Fortuna? 
Let's hit it and find out what sets it apart. Bard? In your fineries, a night so grand. Oh, cool. Cool, you sing for me. Whew, makes it easier for me. She looks so fancy. <laughs> Don't be frightened, my dear. Tuck away those wary eyes. Since you're here at my theater, I bet you all are longing to enjoy a musical like no other, right? Yes. Lady Pearl gracefully positions herself at the microphone. Her arms open wide. She smiles, engaging the crowd with her warmth. As she prepares to exit, Lady Pearl with a sudden spark of whimsy playfully winks at you in the car crowd. Suddenly, the lights go out, thrusting everyone back into the darkness. The audience can't help but buzz with conversation, uneasily pondering the theater owner's speech. In their preoccupation, they all fail to notice the subtle rustling noise starting to echo around them. Hmm? Once your eyes adapt to the lighting, you see that the splendid stage in front of you has changed. Right now it's enveloped by black bars coming out of nowhere, becoming a massive cage. Inside the massive cage, there are separate smaller cages, each with a performer. Some are caught in heated arguments. Others burst into crazed silly laughter. You notice that all the audience members, yourself included, are also enclosed by the bars. Furthermore, the sinners who were right next to you a moment ago have been dispersed. It's unclear which of these numerous cages they've ended up in. Looking at the scene, you can't help but have mixed feelings. Are we really a part of this play? Intriguing, I'm usually the one locking people up. Wait, that's not 100% true. You suddenly remember you've been locked up before too. No, this isn't making sense. What's going on here? How did everyone disappear all of a sudden? 
Livia was just here by my side, and suddenly she's disappeared, and so is she. Where could they have gone? I'm here! Nearby, I panicked, but a familiar voice cuts through your thoughts, offering a brief respite of calm. Glancing up, you notice the red-haired sinner biting her lip, anxiously clinging to the bars, looking all around, obviously distressed about being a part of this play. Hey, looks like the newcomer can't handle the pressure, huh? That's right, girl. Better calm down a bit, or you'll end up bringing the guards down on us. The guards? Could they help me find my friends? My friends, one wearing gray and another a very beautiful girl. They've, they've all disappeared. I need to find them. Believe me, you wouldn't want to talk to the guards. What does that mean? Regarding them. The prisoner pushes her face through the bars, frantically signaling Ignis to lean in. Seemingly doesn't want their remarks to be overheard by the guards. Those devils. They're the kind who'd swallow a person whole without a second thought. If you're skeptical, just wait and see. <laughs> the prisoner's laughter is quickly drowned out by the darkness. Then a startling blue light flares up. Right then you hear a shrill whistle. Whoa. Shut your mouth. On your feet. Ladies and gentlemen, what I'm about to say will keep you alive from this show. So beware. Shut your mouth on your feet, don't try to fight me. See the wall if you try with the brains of pain it. You shall find the ones are those real people and they're using their shadows it's really cool here are the rules we are the rules within these walls you will hear all sorts of fussing and winning from all sorts of puppets and clowns read this past to detect the true color of the hearts gate will only open for the truth it just is that's so, so cool the truth if you want your freedom shut your kiko try to question the rules see the baton the last thing you see is a magnificent firework made of your brain Who's gonna stand and who's gonna fall if you want and now then be a doll? Shut your mouth on the feet, don't try to fight me. But it's up if you ran your face and meet it. Gosh darn, so fun to listen to and addicting to listen to. Oh man, that was so good. I guess we should keep going. What's the show one manager? Side story music. Once in a lifetime. Uh, I assume I should go for the act. Operation on. Everybody stay alert. With the last drum beat echoing, three guards eye you down disdainfully, making a slow, deliberate descent. In their cages, the performers let out piercing screams, sneering and snapping at the three figures approaching them. The hands reach out almost with a desperate craving to grab and consume them entirely. All right, you despicable lot. Cut the smug faces around here. One wrong move, and my baton will make sure your tongues remember it. The baton's clash against the prison bars resonates with a thunderous thud, reverberating intensely. The crowd instinctively recoils, with many in the audience visibly shaking a clear sign of their intimidation. Quite the opener. It almost had me going for a second. You spontaneously burst into applause. There's something about seeing a performance like this up close that's more impactful, filled with a tangible sense of strength and belief. Seems like this trip was a good call after all. See that? 
that. Scared stiff, aren't you? So here's a tip. Don't go around saying things that'll tick them off. Watch out, or you'll get a taste of their baton. Honestly, just forget about them for now. Why don't you tell us what mischief got you thrown into this mess? Shortly after, you see the prisoners around Ignis casually striking up conversations again. They appear to be quite familiar with the prison guard role by now, engaging Ignis in a bit of a light-hearted banter. Luckily, the performers seem to have caught on that Ignis isn't exactly a natural at this acting thing. They tone down their voices, making it easier for her. <sighs> what else would it be? Guys? Gals? Cash? What? No! That's not why I'm here! Hold on, I'm not even a performer. <sighs> hey, it's typical for newcomers still clinging to the hope of going back to Eastside. Ah, uh, I meant back to the outside world. Give it a bit, you'll adjust. <laughs> Poor her, she, she really doesn't really like this type of thing. You spot someone in the cell opposite Agnes, craning her neck to get a better look at you. Her clothes suggest she's just another spectator like you, but she bully steers the conversation winking at Ignis. It's not what you think. If any of you know anything about them, please let me know. My friends, the one in a gray coat seems fragile, and the other was strikingly good looking, like a movie star. <laughs> See? Ugh. I told you, it's always about the people. <laughs> oh dear, ain't you a romantic one? <laughs> Come on, it's all fine. Tell me about it. In the glow of the lights, you notice Ignis's ears blushing the same shade as her hair. Her expression a tingle of awkwardness. With effort, she finally exits out a few words. Please, ladies, I just want to find them. Can you let me out, please? My, you're such a cutie. You want to go out and find them? There's a secret between us. We've got a plan. The question is, do you have the guts for it? Guts or not, you're already in this. There's only one way out of here. The spectator, now fully engrossed in the play, grabs to the bars and joins in the fun. With just that one line, she draws all eyes back to herself. But she doesn't seem used to being the center of attention so suddenly. After a series of ums and ahs, she finally manages to blurt out something. <clears throat> hey, isn't it just, you know, a jailbreak? This is a cell, so that's the only way, you know, to escape. You're doing so well, Prisoner C! Hey, look at the brains on the new kid. So, if you want a way out, the only option left is a jailbreak. Hey, new girl, stick with us when we make a run for it later. Nah, I'm too lazy to budge now. This place is perfect. No infuriating families or heartbreaking partners to deal with. Might as well consider my wish granted. Huh? What wish is that? Wealth, idleness, and a dead husband. She spoke her last words in a hush, but they were met with bursts of hearty laughter. <laughs> anyway, that's the plan. Girly, if you're thinking of getting out, stick with us when we make a run for it. The one cage wiped tears of laughter from her eyes, gesturing towards the stretching, shadowy hallway behind. Will that way lead me to my friends? Not sure, but if you're planning to get out of this place, that's your only shot. Make it to the end of that corridor, find the one to lead us, and get the hell out of here! You and a few sharp-eyed spectators are glued to the end of the corridor, when abruptly a shrill whistle cuts through the air again. Attention! Yard time! Don't just stand there like idiots! Get out here! All of you! Do whatever you want, just don't do anything stupid! Whether to trust others and who to trust, it's your life on the line! And if anyone dares try anything on me, <laughs> I'll be waiting! The cell doors swing open in a flash, the performers bolt out, leaping and singing in a wild revelry, sprinting towards the dark corridor. Yo, sis, come on! We need to find the one in charge! Find the star of this show! I'm sure if we follow that person, it will lead us to all the fun stuff! Let's go! Let's find that leader! Spectators besides you are excited to join in, following in the performer's footsteps. Ch sure, I'll be right there. 
first time on this side of the bars, and who knew it would be such a blast? You, well, glad you're enjoying it. After being sidetracked by this guy, you realize you've fallen behind Ignis. The cell she's already she's in is already vacant. The memory of her earnest look just moments ago brings a warmth to your heart, and a smile naturally crosses your face. Now the area is nearly empty of people. Your smile catches the attention of a few prison guards behind you, who watch you with stern, piercing gazes. What? Are you really fond of this cage? Fancy a tour down the hallway? The rooms are all full of people who've got a thing for cages. All handpicked by me. Uh, no, no, I'm on my way out. Right the second. You pocket that small flicker of emotion, give a respectful bow to the three, and hurry off towards the hallway. Tap here to enter what's on to select the script to use on the battle. Initial, take 10% damage. Okay. Healing ability increases. Clearly, it's gotta be Hamel. Okay. What? No, no, it should be... There we go. I can hear it. The prelude of the dance. Let's see where. You go to such dangerous places just for fun. If you want to use me, I will never let you down. Like that. Um. Did I get everyone? Okay. Mode switch. Action. And then. I'm yeah, I think that should be good. What was that? Well, at least they'll be destroyed quick. I used it for no reason. This What's the difference between drama, act, and show? Oh, it's kind of confusing. Pre-requested level is not complete. Club wielding violent thugs has surrounded you. I'll count to three. Maybe that will Surren show. Shut your mouth. Oh, is it just the? Yeah, I think it's just that, right? Ah, okay, so that's what it was. What's this? Oh, wait, wait. Actually, yes. Get ready. There will be blood. Oh, so this is the beginning. Got it. Okay, so that makes a lot more sense. I was getting a little confused. But this is good to know. I'll take it as a small break. So it's just that. Got it. Uh, then I guess it's this that I have to complete. Don't let go of my hand. No, my child is still inside. A disheveled woman falls to her knees in tears. Flora, ready to take, take action, takes her hand and promises her in a reassuring tone. Don't worry, ma'am. I will save your child. It's you. I saw you in the news about the firefighter's commendation. Please save my daughter. The mother pleads as if she's found her savior. Flora, seeing you next to her, hands the helpless woman's hand into yours. Take care of her for me, all right, chief? Sure, and you must be careful. 
Flora nods firmly and then turns to enter the fire scene, simulated with lights and projections. The fire is so intense! The firefighter has been gone for so long, could it be? No, it can't be! Please be safe! Heavy thud interrupts her prayers as the prop house collapses. The woman screams and nearly faints, and it was then she hears the cry of surprise from others. Look, they're coming out! In the midst of the flames, you see Flora carrying a little girl, lifting huge ruins out of the way single-handedly like a savior with divine strength, rescuing those in need. At last, Flora emerges from the fire and returns the girl to her mother carefully. The mother and daughter embrace each other and cry in relief, and the woman looks up and thanks Flora profusely. I really can't thank you enough! It's my duty. Saving lives is what a firefighter should do. The scene is dangerous. Everyone, please move to a safer place. Oh, that's cute. You won't be able to run away if I find you. Welcome. Welcome to my personal photo exhibition. You truly live up to your reputation as a famous travel photographer. You've traveled to so many places and captured so many beautiful sceneries. The photographs are so powerful, vibrant, and lively. R really? Thank you! I'm glad you like them! This part of the theater has been transformed to a bright exhibition hall. You carefully examine the photos, syndicate white sands, outlands, photos taken from all kinds of places. The photographer sure is a free traveler. Ugh, that's so boring. Travel photographer, huh? These pictures are far from exciting! A discordant voice interrupts your thoughts. A man rudely critiques the photos causing other viewers to frown and avoid him. Lynn, however, walks straight towards him. I'm sorry, but you're severely affecting others' viewing experience. Please leave immediately. Why should I? I'm just providing criticism for poor photography, kiddo. Uh, I really don't like this type of person. The man is about to shove Lynn. Just as you're about to intervene, Lynn grabs his arm and stops him. I... I can travel through Syndicate and White Sands by myself. Even even gangs and desert bandits don't dare not provoke me in my journey. You, you're no match for me. Lynn stammers out her powerful lines, occasionally glancing your way. She swings lightly and the man immediately falls to the ground dramatically, making a scene out of it. Ah, you! His fake groan is drowned out by the applause of the crowd. Eventually he gets up as he holds his stomach in embarrassment and slowly walks out of sight. <laughs> That's so funny. Come on! Let's fight! Isn't it a little too windy here? You wrap your coat tightly around you. The wind machine is powerful and you have no idea how all these sand made their way here. It's as if the entire white sands has been moved here. Hey, are you okay? Don't be afraid, I'll take you to a safe place. Oh, I'd see you, Chief. It's Kawakawa. Seeing you, his eyes widen in surprise. Suddenly, a gaudy, decorative painting crashes near your feet. Clearly not a product of the White Sands. Look, it's really dangerous here. Come with me real quickly. Kawakawa erects a small shelter with his beacons, and you both huddle inside to wait out the storm. In the meantime, he pulls out a bunch of maps, excitedly sharing with you the results of his recent expedition to the White Sands. I am now a fully-fledged surveyor. Once I complete the mapping of the entire White Sands, I can open up a safe route that everyone can freely traverse. The entire White Sands? That's a lot of area to cover. It's not an easy task. It's okay, I'm almost done. My dad brought back a lot of valuable survey data from deep within the White Sands. Made my work so much easier. Your dad has returned home? Please give him my regards. No problem. After the sandstorm ends, I'll take you home as a guest. Okay, but let's do it another time. I have other things to do. In that case, since you still have to travel throughout the White Sands, I'll give you this. Should come in handy. He hands you something made of metal wires, which you accept solemnly. Thank you. I'll make good use of it. Ah, now we can access. Let me give you a spoiler. I'm going to run away in a bit. Better catch up to me. Your curiosity getting the better of you, after checking behind several doors, you find yourself back in the corridor, now nearly empty of people. 
Some spectators are tailing the main squad, while others have already slipped behind those doors, embracing roles meant just for them. It's quite astonishing to see how many have already started to play their roles. Pretty fascinating. I agree, that is pretty fascinating. As you look along the extended hallway, you can't help but wonder with growing excitement what the final act of this play will be. Caught up in your re reflections, you suddenly become aware of a strange sound behind you. What? Just because you're at a loss, you resort to dragging others down into the show with you? If you try to assault me here, I'll make sure you serve a real sentence after you've served your fake one here at this theater. The footsteps are getting louder, inching ever closer. You grip the fountain pen you habitually carry in your pocket, seizing the moment footsteps behind halt and whirl around. Chief! Ignis? You and Ignis face off in a peculiar standoff in the theater's hallway. After a brief pause, I Ignis exhales deeply and dropping her guard. At last, I found you! I was worried that you hadn't come over from the other stage, so I figured I'd hang around here and wait. You could have at least that's the thing! But everyone who came to me was a performer, each one more convincing than the last. I... I... <laughs> Don't worry, you were getting confused. I would too. Ignis' voice fades to a whisper. You move closer, intrigued, and catch her grumbling under her breath. I even started to suspect that Chief was just a performer they'd roped in. <laughs> Dang, all that uh, gaslighting. <laughs> uh, unintentional. Don't worry, I'm the real deal. You're actual Chief. Me in. I trust you. Come on, let's get moving. Under the luminescent lights, Ignis's cheeks are flushed with a hint of crimson. She purses her lips, strides past you, and heads onward. I ran into Luvia just now. She wants us at the stage down the hall when the bell rings three times. Says she's got a surprise for us. A surprise? Luvia is an actress after all. She must be in her element here. Right, and I just. <sighs> Caught wind of the actors saying to break free from this prison, we've got to make it to the far end of the hallway. So we have to go there anyways. Pretty impressive. You kept it to yourself, not letting Ignis know that you've seen every bit of her interplay with the performers. <laughs> Probably for the best. I don't want her to be too embarrassed. You're very sharp today, even deciphering the hints woven into their dialogue. Well, obviously. I'm smart. Yes, yes. Sure you are. Catching the big smile on your face, Ignis swiftly averts her gaze. Hurry up and keep up. If you wander off and get lost again, I'm not coming after you. Yes, yes, whatever you say. Okay, okay, I'll stay right on your heels. Promise not to get lost and be a bother again. You strike quickly to keep up, taking in your surroundings as you go. The hallway is dotted with many doors. Occasionally, one or two NPCs can be seen standing guard. Some are garbed in costumes, others in everyday clothes, more typical outside the theater. But each of them watches you with a distinctly theatrical expression. The lady running this theater is something else, managing so many performers in such a massive space. All to make sure the audience in every corner gets fully drawn in. Didn't she also say something about the audience being able to take part in the show, finding their own characters in the storyline? as well. Luvia mentioned that's what makes this theater a hit. It's curious though how she manages to direct these performers who just pop in pop up in the show spontaneously. Just as you try to take a closer look at each NPC's face, stepping through that last door triggers a sudden burst of light forcing you to squint. Oh look, two more poor souls wandered in. In a blur, a piercing voice suddenly cuts through. The noise around you builds up. Once your eyes adapt to the brightness, you realize that a caged stage, different from the one you had just seen, unfolds in front of you. Oh, what's this? The Midsummer Dream in the tent is only worth five coins. Count to three. Surrender quickly, or I'll get down and beg. Ooh, is this a different? Shabby cloak and paper crown Flashy ribbon is a hand-me-down Plays is red, yes, so renowned Finding the king whose face melt down 
What? Base meltdown? I guess that's the end. Oh, that was all I needed to activate? Okay. The discovery of injustice and misunderstanding doesn't always entail endearing smiles. Please protect me, Chief! Grim walls bear marks of struggle in shades of black and red, while the small window sealed with planks lets no light in. Rings of cages surround a heap of junk in the middle, and it almost feels like you can smell the damp, rotting stench. Here, the performers playing prisoners seem off compared to the ones you met a while ago. Their trickle numb gaze is strangely unsettling. Watching them closely, you can't miss the iron chains on their wrists. Even when they even when let out, they're still bound too close to their cells to really go anywhere. Is this so-called leader actually here? See for yourself. This place is teeming with poor souls. Being nudged along from the ring's edge, you walk inwards. With every person you pass, they lean in to share their tales of woe. I'm damned for my sins. But what did I do? Just snatch some bread from the back door in hunger. That sucks. I'm damned for my sins. But all I did was mistakenly flip my knife while embracing a friend. Um, I don't know if that's, uh, okay. I'm damned for my sins, but my only crime was dozing off while feeding my little brother. I hadn't had any sleep for three days. Ooh, that's little. Oh, and when I woke up, his face was still covered in that spilled porridge. You mean you accidentally drowned him? This place is teeming with, with poor souls. souls. Damned poor souls. The further in you go, the more unfair it gets. Absolutely, absolutely. The one in the center of the prison is the most wronged, the most tragic of us all. She'll reveal her ordeal under the spotlight. She'll be the one to guide us past those brick walls. She's the most wrong of us all, the most sorrowful, the focal point. It's like a relay inside the cages, everyone going as far as they can go, moving you, Ignis, and the audience one by one toward that junk-filled center of the cages. They're serenading the crowd, all eyes in the center where the spotlight never leaves, like it's waiting for someone special to show up. Ch chief that was quite a show. Really scared me there. This feels completely different from what we saw before. I thought the early acts were top-notch, but this, this takes it to a whole new level. This makes me curious about the leader they keep talking about. Looks like everyone's thinking the same. They're all gathered around the center, next craned, waiting to see what kind of showstopper the next act will be. Is it going to be Luvia? Oh, the most sorrowful, the most wronged. Yes, that has to be me. A sweet voice you are too familiar cuts through the air. Then whoosh, all the spotlights focus on the heap of junk before you. The sound of footsteps getting louder and closer and then surprise, someone you never guessed shows up on the top of the cage. I'm damned for my sins, simply because my hair colors are different. I'm damned for my sins, just because my eyes aren't the same color. I'm damned for my sins, only because I am not the same as everyone else. Ooh. On top of the cage, Luvia Ray, shaky and faltering, strikes three unique poses. In her last one, she raises her head as though ready to hug the air and reaches out her arms to you. <laughs> Why are they twitching? Well, to me, it seems like she's giving us the evil eye. 
The crowd around the center cage shares a look of bewilderment. In contrast to the early act, which is profound and compelling, instantly drawing the audience into its weighty atmosphere, the leader appears to be oddly out of place. Hey, at least show me some reaction. Chief, Ignis, it's fine even if you just clap your hands. Oh, right. Soft murmurs as the force through gritted teeth float across the air, catching your and Ignis's attention. Uh, oh, wow. That's nice. Uh, I don't mean what happened to you is nice. I mean, it's it's really well, well played. <laughs> so awkward. Yeah, yeah, really impressive performance. Oh, now I can feel others' sympathy for me. Truly, it's such a rare sight. Movie Array walks down to join your side like a mythical rock. Enfolding its grand wings, she gestures at the actor delivering the opening line. She is set on proving that she has no clue the bread stacked at the back door isn't meant to be thrown away. After another swift turn, Luvia Ray takes hold of the hand of the actor who performs the second line. He has to prove that it was someone else who pushed his friend onto him. Noticing Luvia Ray struggling to come up with the third gesture, the actress who delivered the third line approaches her and kindly takes her hand. No one knew that while she was feeding her little brother breakfast, she hadn't slept for three days. She worked non-stop. And then there's me. The poor me. Luvia Ray approaches you and Ignis once more, enveloping both of you in a heartfelt embrace. A charming girl with a passion for performing, so talented in her craft, they treated her as a sinner and threw her into a prison, mistaking her act for reality. But you are, uh... This... is this scripted too? Livia Ray nestles herself between you and Ignis, whispering in hushed tones as if sharing a secret. <laughs> of course it is. I'll tell you guys a secret. The lady from Fortuna Theater came to me earlier. She said she was impressed with my performance mingling with the other actors. So she decided to make me the star of the show. Though she's trying to keep it down, you can't miss the thrill in Luvia Ray's voice. I'm finally the star of the show for once. Chief Ignis, play along with me this time, please. Of course. When your sinner herself is pitching in, how can you say no? Sure, no problem. You softly tap Luvia Ray's hand that's draped over your shoulder. All right, our star, time to break you out of this prison. Uh, let's see, okay, so it goes straight like that. Like that. Uh. I guess... I guess that's the best way I can go about it. Oh no! Hmm, I guess it's fine. Oh. Did I miss? I think I missed. But it's fine. At least I won. Cleanup completed. If I didn't win, that would be a problem. Break free. Stay behind me. Fantastic, my friends! Thanks for your courage. Thanks for sticking together. When the sky roars its verdict, freedom will be ours! 
The crowd huddles by the window, staring intensely into the night, and as if hearing their pleas, soon thunder rolls across the heavens, making the ghostly lights flicker and dance. A deluge is crashing down, thumber, thunder rumbling with fury. Back up, everyone, move back now. The thunder of justice is about to strike. Wow, that's quite a scene. As the shout echoes, lightning and thunder strike the stage in an instant. The burst of silver white lightning reveals golden sparks. The dilapidated walls, no match for the heavenly punishment, come tumbling down with a roar. Isn't that a bit too real for stage effects? Terrified, the audience instinctively takes cover behind you and Ignis. Meanwhile, the actors rush in. The divide between the confines and the outside world is now broken. Luvia Ray, along with her fellow performers, stands on the rubble, shouting triumphantly. Chief! No! I mean, everyone! Everyone! We've made it! We've succeeded! The star of the show calls out, beckoning everyone to celebrate with her. Those once combined out tasting freedom swarm towards their liberator, converging on the fallen debris. Eagling, they claw their way out of the rubble, looking to their leader to guide them further on their path to free them. Freedom. Yet, Luvia Ray stands still upon the ruins, her gaze fixed in the distance as if waiting, as if she is waiting for someone or something. But this is not enough. While pretending to cough, Luvia Ray takes a quick, quick, secretive look at her palm. What happens if someone spots us and figures out we're on the run? That's true. Then, what should we do? Fear not. I will guide us all to freedom. If you trust me, stand by my side. If you're scared, it's okay to leave first. No sooner has the voice died away than the stage is overrun by a group with cameras and mics, clustering around Luvia Ray with a barrage of flash bulbs going off. Fortuna Prison's walls blown apart? These, wait, you, you're the prisoners from inside? Mr. Reporter! Can't believe you're bold enough to linger here! The guards must be on their heels by now! Oh no, Mr. Reporter, you've got it all wrong! We're just a bunch of innocents who've been falsely accused. We've been pushed around, set up, and ended up here! You've got to help us out! Luvia Ray, eyes fixed on the reporters swarming outside the walls, brings her hands together in a hopeful plea. This is a blockbuster story, right? Please, help us set up a press conference. Luvia Ray steps out, positioning herself before the handful of inmates who have stayed with her. We are the wild winds of rebellion. We chase the fragrant aroma of freedom. This is my own world. Right in front of the reporters, you witness the performers rally together. At this instant, every other noise fades away, leaving only the shouts for freedom and the sound of feet pounding the ground. Ooh, it's another one. I didn't expect that. unexpected do they do this kind of thing for a lot of events probably not maybe it's just the theme 
Okay. I need to be more aggressive. I need to be more aggressive. Places just for fun. Wow, you have my respect. Okay, I think that's good. Mechanical bird. Ugh. How are we supposed to defeat that? Oh no! Are you kidding me? Everything of yours is mine now. The red heat shall the let the dance begin. Okay, okay. Oh. That was kind of annoying. Backstage, Luvia Ray taps her chest, trying to calm her breath from the intense dance. I... I can't believe it. I actually pulled it off. Good job! Is it possible? Could I truly be the star of this show? Luvia Ray, reminiscing the melody, begins to dance again. Light on her feet. Da, 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 da. <gasps> With a sharp turn, Luvia Ray is startled to see someone suddenly behind her. You... You're Lady Pearl. I'm glad you recognized me. <laughs> you see, my eye for talent never fails. You're definitely cut out to be the star of this show. Gosh, about that. Even though I managed to pull off this act, I still think I'm not quite there yet. <laughs> What makes you think that? The elegant lady approaches, gently lifting Luvia Ray's chin, studying her intently. Such a refined and pretty face. A balanced and vigorous body. And your acting is absolutely enchanting. You've got real talent for this, my child. You have that everything I'm looking for in the star of this show. I would assume this is a good thing. R really? You believe I've got talent? Absolutely. What is your name, my child? I... I'm Luvia Ray, an up-and-coming actress from Eastside. Lady Pearl chuckles lightly, her hand gracefully covering her smile. <laughs> Turns out you're a pro. Then that's one more reason why you should give yourself more credit. I heard everything very clearly. Lady Pearl gestures towards Luvia Ray's heart. Listen to the voices here. What version of yourself do you wish to become? What's your dream life like? Say it. What's your choice? In this theater, whatever you choose, I will grant it. Lady Pearl, clasping Luvia Ray's hand, looks, de looks deeply into her eyes. I... I definitely choose... to be the star of every act in life! Well, that makes sense. That that's what she would choose, of all things. Oh my god! Look, we made it! She's right, after all. We can be the Audrey and Marilyn of this century! Picked us up like 
Gorgeous and lovely. We have been told before, but something made her more. Just la la la, a little more. Sad. That show was so impressive. My eyes never lie. Oh, that's the first time to have someone go their eyes. Oh, la la la, our acting so weak. She said that we are strong and pretty. We'll play leading ladies for sure. We had no choice but trust her every instinct. With her close, we fear no more. Wow, this is really captivating to watch. Next intermission time. Cleanup completed. I was wondering why I wasn't changing. Turns out I needed to click on it. Unlock at March thirteen. Oh, is it this? Managed theater. Managed theater mode was suitable. Okay, complete events. Tap here. Okay, okay. Confirm. Uh, star running. Oh. Can I get another? Nope. Yay! Already the best lineup. Oh wait, do I need... Or do I need to unlock it? Oh wait, there's a guide. Oh no, that's just... Oh, this must be the bard! Let's see, complete directionless. What's this box office? Oh, it's just the... Then if I enter... Oh, Manage Theater Level 3. Manage Theater Level 3. I need to... Oh, do I click this? Boss, are you sure about the raise? I've only been here for a few months. Boss, I can't handle such an important position right now. I want to gain more experience first. Manager? Me? Boss? I'm really not capable enough yet. Rise and shine. The lunch break was over half an hour ago. Wait, that's us? What the heck? Why are we so pretty? Unimpressive actors. A gangster. 
Mm. Yeah, let's do that. That looks good. Now it works. I think we're still fine. New area unlocked. Ooh, more people. Uh, Villager Duck and the Wizard of Oz. Let's see what this is. Everyone complains that the art consultant's instructions are getting more strict by the day, and the real progress is not promising. You decide to have a chat with her. 20 minutes later, you also get sent out with the scolding. She critiques your business strategy, management method, and criteria for choosing scripts. <laughs> so this is how we get people. An employee catches you decompressing by running up and down the back stairs, mimicking a gorilla. Embarrassed, you explain that bosses also need to relieve their stress too. The employee nods but can't hold back his laugh. Desperate, you offer him five extra days off in exchange for him not spilling the beans. The show sold 10 tickets, but the venue was almost packed. Do you have any clue about that? Many snuck in from corners I couldn't see. There were too many ticket evaders. Boss, are you sure we can't hire more staff? Looks like we can't skip on this anymore. We need to think of a solution. Let's see if we can hire some part-timers who could do good work, but don't ask for much. Sheesh, how many can we get? I heard that the most popular employee is the electrician who lends new comics to everyone. Everyone even lines up around her during lunch break, which has caused minor congestion in the electrician's room. Having mixed feelings about this, you decide to convert the abandoned storage room into a lounge and even buy a bunch of popular comics to put it on the bookshelf at your own expense. Let's get more. It's time to go through this month's employee suggestions. We should upgrade the sound system to enhance the audiovisual experience. Agreed. Boss, please hire more stagehands. We can't all the work. I'll consider it. You, why don't we incorporate rap elements into the musical? Absolutely not. Okay, it's three. Clear all the paint. Paint everywhere. Use the employee skill to clean up the paint on the stage. Tap on Labby to use her skill. Let's do it! Yeah! Uh, the, the prison, the island, and Mamma Mia. Whew! Okay, okay, quick match. Yay! Uh, I think we can just keep doing it. Let's keep going. What's this? Quick match. Oh, do we not have enough? Uh, let me see. Faced with increasingly fatigued employees, you come up with a solution. You decide to have standing morning meetings every Monday, so Wednesday and Friday. Everyone must report their work progress during the past two days. After the meeting, the whole team gathers around for a pep talk. After a month of trial, you notice a surge in absentees on these days every week. Many unauthorized videos of the theater's performances have linked recently, causing a significant drop in daily ticket sales. Guided by an expert, you hired a least seasoned lawyer who specializes in intellectual property cases. From then on, the theater has gained a new source of income named IP Compensation. Um. Uh. Let's do this. Oh. Again. Poor, poor, uh, yeah, poor boy. Uh, Captain's Home, Countryside, small to, uh, yeah, Countryside. The slum, slum. Quick match. Quick match. Oh, okay, now I have to complete endless operations? I think that's what it said. 
Let me collect this. Oh, uh, where was it? Music three. Wait, I need to double check. What is it that I need to do? Endless invitations to unlock the level cap. Manage theater in level 10. Main story? Is it this? This invigorating march will be the opening theme of our battle. Freezing fingers in the day. Empty stomach has the same. Lady Blonde makes her way. Arkin's down bows on the stage. Raise your head as moms are fed Boys, gold and lacquered hair Want some more, want some more Attempt to good before bear Want some more, want some more As some deserts make life fair Bar for two Approach with care. So, it's so nice to listen to. Ah, there we go. Oh, I wonder how long this is. It says we only performed 36%, or is it because I didn't finish the dramas? I won't let you down. The show's second act is about to commence. The lights of the pri private box slowly came on, gliding the graceful lady with a dull era. aura. She listens to the melodies and voices, softly applauding. Quite good, quite good. We're seamlessly moving into the second act. Looks like almost all have found their desired part in this play. Lady Pearl, resting on the edge of the box's window, gazes down at the crowd on the stage. Looking around, her focus landed on the person in the gray coat among the people. Oh? There still seem to be a few lambs roaming about. Uh, are you talking about me? There's no rush to it, dears. Keep immersing. Keep enjoying. Life's about making choices. Every decision you make will lead you closer to the role that's just right for you. She's kind of scaring me. I'm looking forward to that moment. That moment <sighs> when you transform into what you've always dreamed of being. She gazes at the performers on stage and then enthralled audience, a look of contentment spreading across her face. Second act is about to start. Ready to keep enjoying the show? Yes. Miss Luvia Race, so you're going ahead with the co press conference tonight. That's right. The moment the bell tolls five times, the press conference kicks off. This soon? Have you guys got your evidence and presentations all lined up? Our journey testifies to our struggles. We are the living embodiment of injustice. Luvia Ray remains in front of her fellow escapees, addressing the press. Everyone, please come and witness the moment we clear our names. With that final line, the curtains draw to a close and the audience begins to file out through the gaping hole left by the explosion, buzzing with excitement over the show. Wow, that dance was awesome! And the singing was top-notch too! 
Seeing it firsthand truly makes a difference. Got it. It's etched in my mind. The moment the bell tolls five times, that's when we prove our innocence. Come on, let's move. We've got to catch up with that woman in charge. I'm not missing the next act. Spectators began streaming in the direction where Luvia Ray vanished, with a few glancing back to hurry you along. Come on, hurry! If you stay, the guards might toss you back in there. Uh, teaming up to follow that lady in charge is one thing, but acting? Sorry, that's really not my cup of tea. I... I'm gonna have to say no as well. Thinking back to when she was encircled and teased by those prisoner girls, Ignis edges behind you, gulping apprehensively. Shame, really. I mean, imagine being falsely accused, and then the rush of clearing your name. It must be quite a thrill. Totally. I just love seeing their faces. A mix of surprise and guilt. Well, at least you guys are having fun. The two spectators shrug and don't push it further, leading you all towards the curtain. I thought behind this curtain was just backstage. Looking around, you see a T-shaped road cutting across the stage, flanked by buildings of different heights stretching into the background. Drivers at the wheel lean out to tell you and Ignis to step aside, and right there on the street, a newsboy is continuously hawking his papers. Mind your step, miss. A chef carrying a tray of oven-fresh bread walks by Ignis. The inviting scent of warm, buttery, sugared bread drifts under your nose. No, why are you making me hungry? Ah. Incredible. The sit transformed instantly. Just like a magician's trick. You and Ignis can't help but express your awe as you stroll down the designated walkway. Exclusive update! Exclusive update! Numerous prisoners have fled Fortuna Prison, but they claim they are innocent. Tonight, when the bell tolls five times, they'll host a press conference to prove they've been framed. Ladies, care for a copy? It's the talk of the town today. The newsboy glances at Ignis, then you catch Ignis's gaze. With a resigned sigh, you fish out a hundred disc coins from your wallet. The newsboy grabs the cash, hands over a copy of the paper, and moves along the street, calling out the day's news. <sighs> What's going on with the world these days? What? You don't believe these people are innocent? <sighs> I'd rather not comment. The chef, busy with his bread, shakes his head dismissively. But then he does a double take between the paper and you guys. Hold on! Are you folks on the run from Fortuna? Get away from here, and fast, or else I'm going to alert them, and they will catch you. <laughs> yeah, we are. And what's it to you? We already said we were innocent. If you hand us over, you're just as guilty. You'll be the same as them. Suddenly, those two spectators kick up a fuss, acting as though they had become characters in the play. The crowd on the street becomes hostile, looking as if they're ready to throw punches. Your only option is to grab Ignis and duck behind a stage prop. Ignis hasn't said a word for some time now, and during the unwarranted rejection and expulsion by the crowd, you feel the unease of the sinner from the other side of the shackles. Don't worry, it's all just a part of the show. It's just that their act was a bit too lifelike and quite unexpected. I'm alright. No worries. It's just, I never thought I'd feel the sting of being chased off like this again. Ignis gives a slight shake of her head and steps closer to you, letting out a sigh that seems to carry relief. The two performers have bolted. What's our next move? Where do we go from here? We've got to track down Luvia, right? We need to find the heroine to see the story progress. True, as spectators, the theater would want us to stay engaged in the performance. They won't make the clues too hard to find. You take a quick glance outside, making sure the performers have lost interest in you and Ignis. Once clear, you guide Ignis away from the stage prop. Come on, there are plenty of rooms to explore. Let's check them out. We're bound to find something. I wonder what this is. Where did my auto dashing wheel go? As you walk towards the stage, you step on something. Dashed out? 
You bend over to pick it up and find it's a newspaper. The year is before nightfall. The headline talks about a play being performed, which has attracted a huge crowd. Just as you're about to take a closer look, you hear a rush of footsteps on the stage. The door to the set is pushed open, and someone bursts in with the newspaper. The playwright sitting by the window looks up. Sir, sir, you made the headlines! Listen to this review! The play After Nightfall showcases extraordinary imagination and creativity. The protagonist known as Chief is groundbreakingly... Indeed, After Nightfall signifies the maturity of the theater industry. In the future, it will undoubtedly become a gem in theatrical history. Let me see! The playwright snatches the newspaper, his lips and eyebrows trembling. I've made it! I finally made it! I made a masterpiece! I'm a great playwright! The playwright wipes away tears, bouncing around the room like an immature student. You're truly amazing! Mania, NBCC, Chief, it's all so interesting! How did you come up with such a world? The playwright modestly touches his head. <clears throat> I just had a dream like this one day. I also dreamed I was a student in the future world. No matter how I tried, I couldn't get into the art school. In the end, no choice but to set up an array in the theater to pay pray to the ancestors. Oh my, how could you possibly be such a nobody? On stage, the assistant continues to flatter the playwright. Off stage, Ignis tries to keep a straight face, but her shoulders can't stop shaking. She waves the newspaper, signaling you to, to look. Interpretation of the role of chief. Exclusive interview. Why did B -B 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 design the chief role? NBC's chief kindles theater passion. You look at the newspaper, then at the stage, turn your head to look at Ignis, points at your soul. Me? As long as I can protect those who I love. Holding the strange notes you discovered hidden behind the door, you and Ignis return to the street. The street is as busy as ever, and yet among the hustle and bustle, you can't help but notice several new faces, probably recent spectators blending into this crowd, each embracing their unique part. Four deep bell tolls resonate from overhead, signaling to you that time is ticking closer. To Luvia Ray's much-awaited press conference, find Luvia. We're on the clock. Locating Luvia is crucial. Only then can we unravel the next twist in this unfolding narrative. Without that, we're stuck as mere extras, missing out on the central storyline. You piece together all the notes you've gathered, and they lead to a specific location. Glancing upwards, you indeed spot a hidden alley, veiled by a swath of drapery. Is it possible that Luvia's here? You look at the clue in your hand, a hint of concern etching your brow. Something feels off. In the rooms you just checked, there were many performers, with even a few sinners among them. Strangely, their behavior is entirely uncharacteristic. Are they perhaps playing their parts too convincingly? Chief, I've got this nagging feeling that something isn't right. Ignis looks out onto the street, her bro furrow, seemingly picking up on something amiss. Didn't we have a crowd of spectators around us when we first got here? They're gone now, and it's like every person we see has become a performer, playing a role, whether we're aware of it or not. Also, in the first act, sometimes the audience members who are on stage forgot that they were performing. Right, back then you didn't even need to look at what they were wearing to tell who had abruptly joined the performance. But now... Watching the busy streets, the set here is incredibly authentic. Each person appears to be truly living their life, engaging in shopping, leisure, arguments... However, the more lifelike it becomes, the stronger the sense of disconnect you both feel. You feel like aliens, invaders, as if you don't fit into this world. Is this what Lady Pearl meant by the extraordinary, incomparable theater? Where each person gets to pick the life they've always wanted to live? Where everyone can find the most fitting role for themselves? Yet, yeah, there's something off about this play. It's unnerving. Could it be we're still searching for our destined parts? What happens if we end up never finding them? Could we... Could we end up just like before, being chased? No, that's impossible. 
What if all the spectators became, become the performers who's left to witness the extraordinary play? Ignis, anxiously nibbling her lip, receives a reassuring pat on the shoulder from you. Don't worry, you're not alone in this. I'm still just a spectator without a script too. Any problems arise, I'll protect you. Seeing you arch an eyebrow, trying to look cool, Ignis huffs and averts her face. I don't need your protection. I'm the sinner here. It's obvious that I should be the one watching out for you. Oh. Although Ignis tries to look calm, her ears, however, now reddening beneath her fiery hair, gives away her secret thoughts. Relax, it's unlikely anything will go wrong. And if we're worried about losing our way in the script, we'll, we've always got Luvia to turn to. You flick the notes in your hand and start walking in the direction written on them with Ignis. Luvia is the star Lady Pearl handpicked herself. Find her and we'll have the playbook for what comes next. What's there to worry about? Everything will be fine. And those were her last words. Just kidding. Led by the clue, you take the side stairs up into a larger stage area. Near the door, concealed by curtains, you're suddenly greeted by voices coming from inside. Yes. What have we done wrong? Let's just stick to that line, no matter who it is. Following the voices, you reach a building. As you're about to open the door, a familiar voice echoes from within. Mr. Reporter will handle everything on our behalf. And Mr. Lawyer, he'll be keeping an eye out for us in secret. A reporter and a lawyer? Opening the door, a wave of soft music flows out. There in the heart of the hall, an opulent seat is Luvia Ray, poised elegantly. Surrounding her are several people you've encountered before. They appear to be engrossed in a conversation, oblivious to your entry. I'll sort everything out with them. As your leader now, it's my duty to keep you safe. Fear not, friends. You have me. I'm not the same person I once was. I'm no longer a pushover. Luvia Ray speaks with such conviction that it sparks a wave of cheers. Surrounded by admirers, the spotlight shines on her when it, wherever she goes. This level of confidence is new to you, as is the stunning acting talent she's now revealing. It's almost like you're seeing a stranger. Approaching Luvia Ray. Um, Luvia? Or perhaps Ray? You tentatively call out to Luvia Ray. She swiftly turns her attention to you and Ignis. Oh, you two. Have you got the interview questions prepared yet? What interview questions? You and Ignis share a look of confusion, slightly at a loss. Can I steal you away for a quick chat, if that's okay? We really need your help at the moment. Luvia Ray gazes at you with a perplexed tilt of her head, but still makes her way over. If you're stumped with the writing, just consult Mr. Reporter. He brought you two along as assistants out of goodwill, after all. Getting to work on big news stories as an assistant? That's a once-in-a-lifetime experience! So are we supposed to tag along with Mr. Reporter next, but... Luvia Ray interrupts you, gesturing to the reporter engrossed in his work. If you're nervous, just stick to the script Mr. Reporter wrote. Luvia Ray grabs a pile of papers from the desk, handing them over to you and Ignis. Have you got enough clothes over at Fortuna? Have you got enough food over at Fortuna? Try to have a tearful look when you ask questions, okay? You guys can pull that off, can't you? Luvia Ray strides back and forth before you, her expression full of tactical calculations. Her hands orchestrating the air as if she is gearing up not for a press meeting, but for a do-or-die showdown. So we're expected to put on an act? You think to yourself. Watching Luvia, you can't help but notice how effortlessly natural she appears, looking at you as though you're just part of the cast, lacking any trace of her earlier appeals for cheers while dancing. Well, acting isn't exactly our forte, you know. Just fill us in on what's supposed to happen next. You grab the sheets from Ignis, handing them back over to Luvia Ray. Yeah, we'll just be the audience and watch you guys do your thing. I know you all have been nailing your roles. The moment you respond, you instantly feel the whole hall's ambience taking a tense turn. Roles? You think this is all just an act? Luvia Ray looked at you, her eyes flashing with a threatening intensity. I'm the one in 
charge here. Their guardian hero. The one who'll guide them to freedom. A hush falls and you observe Olivia Ray's face gradually growing more somber. And you think I'm just putting on a show? I... That's what you've been doing, right? You're Luvia, aren't you? My sin... My friend. I don't recognize you. Aren't you the reporter's assistant? My friends? What are you uh, talking about? Lady Pearl, what on earth did you do? You're an intruder. You don't belong here. Suddenly, the shackles in your consciousness clench tight, a sharp pain striking fiercely. In haste, you shove Ignis aside. Lightning crashes down just like it did in the jailbreak. Hold on, Luvia, that was you using your special power? You have that everything I'm looking for in the star of this show. This is my ability. I'm the heroine, chosen by the story itself. I won't let you interfere! Luvia, what? Have you forgotten who we are? Wipe them out! Luvia raises her arm, calling to action, and the culprits echo her call passionately. They are not our allies. They're here to take our freedom! We mustn't let them prevail! The lights begin to flash widely, blinding those who don't know the stage well. All that can be heard are the angry shots and footsteps. The sounds of footsteps become more chaotic with more people charging at you. In an instant, you and Ignis are separated. Chief! Watch out! I'll protect my people. No one's harming them on my watch. Instant chaos erupts, performers brandishing props, with Luvia Ray commanding the lightning. Furniture falls over a mysterious wind buffets you. All, all driven by a shared intent to overcome you, converging on your position. You dodge and weave, seeking Ignis, but your gaze finds only Luvia Ray, regally, regally seated in her throne-like chair. She's orchestrating everyone's actions, clearly determined to scatter you. In her distant eyes, you see clearly she's the star of the show, not your sinner. Something's off with this theater, with this storyline. Ooh, new paradise on earth. Quick cast. Okay, there we go. Oh, let's use this script. Let's see where. Okay, let's do this. Come on, come at me. Is mine now. Ugh. Gotta get rid of them. You can't escape. There we go. That was easy. When you've at least at last handled the crowd after you, the bell has already tolled six times. Yet when you get back to where Luvia Ray and the others were, it's already empty. 
Livy has gone as well. Ignis, where are you? If you're out there, answer me! You're met with only with the echo of your own urgent voice. Despite feeling the shackles still holding, the chaos of the recent fight and the script that spiraled out of control make one thing clear. This theater is engulfed in a maelstrom of mania. The spectators who have unexpectedly turned into convincing performers have been swept up in this mania as well. I need to track both of them down fast. Can't risk them being in danger. You resolve to head back to the streets you've been earlier. Maybe there are some leads on what comes next to the script. Surely a better bet than blindly searching for someone in this colossal the theater. Everywhere you look, there's no sign of a backstage. No staircase to step off the stage. Luvi Ray has become deeply absorbed in the script, and Ignis seems to have been affected by the theater's atmosphere. If we don't find her soon, she might also get entangled in the script. The theater owner browses through her booklet, each name recorded like a cast list. Hmm. Everyone has pretty much found it. The life they yearn to live through the script. Oh. Everyone except this cutie who didn't find the right part. Lady Pearl's fingers lightly chase the name, a hint of smile at the corner of her mouth. I do like a little unpredictability in the script. Some twists I can't control. Well, I will still give you options, but... Try to break free, little bird. Just... Don't let me down. She looks so scary. This mission... Oh, well, let me see if I can keep going with the managed theater. Oh, I guess not. Sad. Thought that I could, but I guess not. Oh wait, I can? Oh no, I can't, of course. <laughs> I can only click on the button. Well, I guess that's pretty much it for this video. Hopefully I'll be able to record part two this week so that way I don't miss out on the rest of the story. But clearly Lady Pearl is very sauce. And hopefully we can roll for Lady Pearl in the next video. If not, I'll be saving it for whoever's upcoming. By the way, thank you for joining me and watching my playthrough of this Path to Nowhere event. If you want to have more Path to Nowhere content from my channel, then make sure to give it a like, comment down below, subscribe, and share. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!